اوكي سو اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مجندان عرب وسائل لهات مع كبابايان Good morning, good morning to everyone uh, sa lahat po na makakita nitong uh, video. So today this video ay uh, patungkol pa rin po itong mga kababayan sa kaganapan ngayon sa bansang China. Uh, sa patuloy na naranasan nilang uh, ano, uh, hirap dahil sa kakulangan. Hindi na, hindi na po sapat ang kanilang mga ospital, hindi na sapat ang kanilang mga krematorium at hindi na rin sapat ang mga kabaong na pagsisilidan at pagsusunogan ng mga bangkay na nangamatay dahil sa infect, infected ng virus sa kasalukuyan. Mga kababayan, no, uh, panoorin po natin itong uh, international news patungkol dyan sa pangyayari dyan sa, dyan sa China. The pandemic is raging in China. The number of infected people and deaths is increasing rapidly, and crematoriums have been unable to operate around the clock. Some local authorities have used cold storage and makeshift outdoor shacks to preserve bodies. According to a Chinese analyst, Sichuan Electric Furnace Steel Mill recently sent a letter to the Ministry of Civil Affairs indicating that short-process steel mills in the province are in a state of shutdown or partial shutdown. Therefore, they are applying to increase the business of funeral and cremation services to contribute to reducing pressure on the funeral industry. This post has now been deleted. Weibo account Li Shanxiao 0008, who claims to be a Chinese economist and has 556,000 fans, previously mainly posted analysis articles on investment sectors such as the stock market, futures, and funds. But on December 29, 2022, the account reposted a post from Sichuan Electric Furnace Steel Mill. The article read, Due to cyclical reasons in the industry, most of the short-process steel mills in Sichuan have been in a state of shutdown or partial shutdown this year, leading to equipment and machinery not working and forcing employees to quit. We realize that due to the new COVID-19 wave and weather factors, the cremation industry is overworked. Customers have to wait for a long time. Now, given the characteristics of the short process steel mill, in order to take advantage of the existing equipment, we specifically propose to do funeral and cremation services and apply for a subsidy to reduce carbon emissions. The article also explains the advantages of short process steel mills, frankly saying that traditional cremation services uses fuel oil, which is not friendly to the environment. In contrast, short process steel mills use high temperature electric furnaces and the complete combustion process is faster, fully meeting environmental protection requirements. At the end of the article, it added, Time waits for no one. Hope to receive a reply as soon as possible, calling on relevant units in Sichuan province to make a decision as soon as possible. According to Liberty Times, Weibo account Li Shanxiao 0008 posted an article indicating that the Fujian branch of the Sichuan Electric Furnace Steel Mill was the first to apply for an electric furnace cremation. The account admires the business acumen of the Fujian people, Electromagnetic arc furnaces burn faster and are hygienic and environmentally friendly. The account is currently banned. In this regard, some Chinese netizens expressed skepticism. Some people complained that all people are steelmaking. Is it true that they use people to make steel? Great Leap Forward 2.0 and Too Evil. The COVID pandemic in China is still increasing, and it has long been reported that funeral homes and crematoriums in many places are operating beyond capacity. To quell the pandemic and anxiety of people in China, Xinhua News Agency and People's Daily, the official media outlets of the CCP, recently posted a poster with red background and white letters on Weibo writing, Facing the pandemic, the Chinese are not afraid, knowing that there are tigers in the mountain cave. We can only catch tigers in the tiger's cave. Thousands of Chinese netizens left comments and criticism at the end of the post. Radio Free Asia quoted as follows, The mainstream media always makes funerals fun. I invite the leaders of the CCP's Central Committee to go to hospitals, funeral homes, crematoriums to see the suffering of the people. On January 5th, the information three members of a family of six passed away became a hot search on the Chinese internet, causing lively discussion among netizens. The tragedy happened in Xiaoheba, Luowang Town, Yilin District, Zhaotong City, Yunnan Province. 
According to the Jinan Daily Press, three members of a family of six died within five days. Local government departments have conducted an investigation but denied the rumor that the death was due to COVID-19. According to a publicly broadcast video, the three dead people were the grandfather, father, and mother of the children in the family. In just five days, all three had died, and the eldest son was also hospitalized, leaving his two helpless brothers alone. Faced with their parents' death and their older brother's serious illness, the two younger brothers were both sad, helpless, and in deep despair. After hearing about the family's tragic experience, the villagers helped the brothers organize the funeral. After that, they began to collect money and goods and delivered them to the two brothers. In the video, the family member said that his grandfather, over 90, died on the morning of December 28th, and his father, aged 48, died on December 30th. On the morning of January 2nd, 2023, the family went to the mountain to bury the two deceased. His mother, 46, also passed away on the same day. In the video, local government employees respond to rumors that three members of one family have died after contracting COVID, claiming that the deceased had underlying medical conditions before their death. Since the beginning of December last year, when the CCP lifted pandemic control without warning, a new pandemic wave has swept through China. The authorities have taken action to avoid any talk of the deaths being related to COVID. For example, at the end of December 2022, a video on the internet showed a 31-year-old doctor from the Hospital of Traditional Chinese Medicine in Jiaotong City, Yunnan Province, who died of COVID on December 26. The paper reported on December 28, 2022, that the local government said that it was true that a doctor had died locally, but said that the doctor had not performed a nucleic acid test. On December 20th, this doctor was not feeling well and thought he was infected with COVID, and he then took a leave of absence and went home to rest. On the 25th, he was taken to the hospital by colleagues, and he was admitted to the ICU on the same day and died at midnight on the 26th. This person said it was impossible to determine whether the doctor died from COVID. Other doctors at the related hospital said that many doctors had been infected with this disease and many patients have also been infected. At the beginning of 2023, at least 11 famous painters in China died in this COVID outbreak, including national-level artist Deng Zijing. However, authorities have not disclosed the specific cause of death. Many Chinese people find that as the new year begins, more and more obituaries of Chinese officials are published. In some cases, more than 10 obituaries were published on the same day. In particular, the obituaries of famous Chinese painters have also increased significantly. As a result, public attention has been aroused as it was considered a rare phenomenon before. At 6.26 a.m. on January 5th, 2023, Du Ziling, a famous Chinese artist, formerly the vice president of the China Painting Association, the doctoral supervisor of the National Academy of Arts of China, a researcher from the National Academy of Painting, and a professor at Nankai University, died of illness in Beijing at the age of 82. Du Ziling created continuous comics, propaganda posters, and Lunar New Year paintings such as Li Shuang Shuang and Rad Propagandist. These two works both praised the CCP. On January 4th, the famous painter Zhou Changyi, a famous professor of the Sichuan Academy of Fine Arts, died of illness at age 78. Zhou Changyi was an elite professor at the Sichuan Academy of Fine Arts. He used to paint celebrating the CCP's rise to power and for the CCP's 100th anniversary. NetEase reported that at 3 a.m. on the same day, Zhang Jixin, a member of the CCP, a master of Huan Yao, flowers and birds painting in Jiangsu province, and an art educator, also passed away at the age of 98. Zhang Jixin has repeatedly painted pictures to commemorate the day the CCP came to power. In May 2019, a calligraphy and painting exhibition marking the 70th anniversary of the CCP's rule was held at the Zhang Jixin Museum of Art. Zhang Jixin was a member of the Association of Chinese Artists, a librarian of the Jiangsu Provincial Institute of Literature and History, and an honorary president of the Suzhou Artist Association. At 5.51 on January 3rd, Liu Wenxuan, a famous painter and art educator in Ningbo, Zhejiang, passed away at age 100. He was the director of the China Artist Association, Zhejiang Branch, vice president of the Zhejiang Provincial Art Education Research Association, and president of the Ningbo Artist Association. During his life, Liu Wenchuan attended the Zhejiang Provincial Cultural Representative Conference several times and once received an exclusive interview with CCTV, according to the paper. 
Tencent reported that in the early morning of January 3rd, Pan Honghai, a famous oil painter and honorary president of the Zhejiang Academy of Painting, passed away from illness in the city of Hangzhou at 81 years old. Pan Honghai's works include the comic series Mao Zedong in his youth, Ginny and Marx, and Paris Commune, etc. According to Sohu, at around 3 p.m. on January 3rd, Zhou Lingjiao, a professor at the Central Academy of Fine Arts, named the Lifetime Achievement Artist of the China Literary and Arts Federation, passed away in Beijing. Zhou Lingjiao was a member of the CCP. His typical works include China's first poster, Easter, and the oil painting, May Fourth Movement. In addition, works he was involved in designing include the portrait of Mao Zedong on the Tiananmen Gate Tower, the national emblem of the CCP, the flag of the Youth Pioneers and Communist Youth Union badge, a set of RMB banknotes from Monday to Wednesday, etc. At 9.48 a.m. on January 2nd, Bao Bin, a member of the CCP, a Chinese painter, a design educator, a member of the Association of Chinese Artists, and a former president of Nanjing University of the Arts, passed away in Nanjing at the age of 87. His typical works include paintings, A Good Harvest, Mr. Longevity and the Crane, and Spirit of Hua Xia. Jiangsu People's Publishing House published A Good Harvest in 1961. It has been reprinted eight times, with a total circulation of 110 million copies. This Lunar New Year painting has the effect of praising communism. In addition, on the railings on both sides of the road of the Chengjiang Bridge in Nanjing, there are 202 cast-iron reliefs, including six reliefs of workers and soldiers with gears, barley, and five-pointed star, designed by Bao Bin. At 12.50 p.m. on January 2nd, Deng Zijing, a professional painter of the Guangdong Academy of Painting, a first-rate national artist and former president of the Chinese Academy of Painting, passed away in Guangdong province at the age of 80. According to Art Weekly, Deng Zijing once painted a collection of paintings on the occasion of the CCP's 100th anniversary and its 40th anniversary of reforming and opening up. On the same day, January 2nd, Nettie's reported Zhong Han, a famous Chinese oil painter and professor at the Central Academy of Fine Arts, also died of illness at 94. Zhong Han painted many oil paintings praising the CCP, such as on the banks of the Yanghe River, crossing the Huanghe River from the east, and others. The work on the banks of the Yanghe River praising Mao Zedong was widely reported by the CCP's official media, such as People's Daily, Guangming Daily, and China Youth Daily. Zhong Han became famous thanks to this oil painting. In addition, Li Bixia, a famous Chinese Huanyao painter and an academician of the Chinese Academy of Painting and Calligraphy, also died of illness in Hefei on January 2nd at 93. Li Bixia is a member of the Association of Chinese Artists and an associate professor at Anhui University's Academy of Arts 10, according to Tencent. On January 1st, 2023, Ho Yimin, a Central Academy of Fine Arts professor, passed away. He painted revolutionary history, praising the CCP, and participated in the design of the Renminbi. The official CCP media called Ho Yimin one of the pioneers of China's new mural painting movement. It is worth noting that the 11 artists mentioned above died within five days of each other. Still, the Chinese Communist regime did not disclose their specific cause of death, leading many to question whether these deaths were related to the current COVID outbreak. Hospitals in China are showing on the front lines the ravages of the new wave of coronavirus affecting people of all ages, but is especially lethal to the elderly. A video posted on January 5th on YouTube and filmed at Xi'an Hospital in Xi'anxi Province, China, shows many people being treated in the corridors by medical staff. The person who took the video commented, The emergency department in Xi'an is coming to a standstill. Patients bring their own oxygen equipment to seek medical treatment. From the bathroom door, it is full of hospital beds, and the elderly are sitting in wheelchairs, queuing up to die. Many elderly people are dying. The real situation makes people cry. Those over 75 and with injuries basically can't escape. I saw two elderly die after rescue failed. The pressure on the staff is unimaginable. There is not enough equipment. Doctors and nurses can't do anything. Not enough oxygen ports and not enough beds. He also said, the hallways are crowded and sick people are being cared for on the floor. The video footage shows that the patients are overwhelmingly elderly. Days earlier, Twitter Video China posted a video that called hospitals in Xi'an purgatories on earth while recounting that medical resources have collapsed and that patients' relatives are on their knees begging for treatment. According to the video, funeral homes must wait five to seven days to cremate people. Several hospitals are facing the same reality. This video exposes the terrible hospital situation. The same images are repeated. 
Long lines of people crowd the corridors of a hospital in Beijing. People in wheelchairs, on the floor, improvising beds with the chairs in the waiting room, all waiting to be attended by a group of nurses and doctors at the end of their strength. Outside near the entrance, there are dozens of patients on mobile stretchers, some with oxygen equipment and surrounded by family members. Medical personnel try to offer them some kind of care. The nurses look exhausted after long working days. From a hospital in China, one of them says while bursting into tears, We've been working from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. No time for a sip of water or a bite to eat. Endless jobs to do. When will these kinds of days end? The hospital collapse also has repercussions for funeral homes. NTD News shows images of the lobby of funeral homes in Xi'an, where people flock to start procedures and contract services, while the square in front of the funeral home gathered nearly a thousand relatives waiting for a funeral. In another of the videos, dozens of people run desperately to get services at a funeral home in Suzhou. They had been waiting through the night until the following morning to offer their loved ones a chance for a dignified farewell. Yan nga po mga kabay, nakita na panood natin no, yung video, yung video, yung news na ng kaganapan dyan sa China. Nakita naman po natin na ultimo yung uh, yung uh, kumpanya ng, uh, ng bakal, yung kumpanya na nagtutunaw ng bakal ay nag-offer na rin para sa krematorium. Dahil ultimo ipakrimit mo ang iyong kapamilya na nasawi dahil sa virus ay eh magantay ka pa po ng ilang araw hanggang sampung araw no uh, sa ospital ang haba ng pila sa bilhan ng kabaong wala na mabilhan ang haba ng pila at uh, hindi na po natin uh, halos kayang ilarawan yung uh, kasaloko yung kaganapan diyan sa bansang uh, China so palagi na lang po na ating nasasabi rito ay uh, sama-sama po natin ipagdasal ipanalangin na naway uh, hindi na po kumalat sa iba pang bansa naway hindi na makalabas dyan sa China ang uh, virus na yan at uh, ma, ma, magan, ma, ano na yan, magamot na yan mahanapan na ng solusyon yan at makontra na yan uh, virus na yan at hindi na lumaganap pa sa ibang bansa dahil uh, alam naman po natin kung gaano kabikat ang uh, pinagda, pinagdaan na natin itong nakarang nagkaroon ng uh, sunod-sunod na lockdown maraming na walang trabaho maraming Pamilya talaga ang dumalas sa sobrang hirap. So mga kababayan, no? uh, muli ay uh, uh, hiniingi ko na ipagdasal din po natin itong mga taga-China dahil tao rin naman po sila katulad natin.